Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at two algebra problems that a student gave me that I thought were kind of interesting. The first one gives us uh, an equation where it says ax over c plus b minus d equals e. And the goal is to solve for x. That was the first equation. And here, to do this, right, you want to isolate x. So let me first of all highlight x. Here it is. This variable eventually, as we work through this, at the end should be all alone on one side of the equation. And then we'll have an equal sign with everything else on the other. That means that we're solving x in terms of c, b, d, and e. In other words, we're saying x doesn't equal a number. We're not solving it in terms of a number. We're solving it in terms of the other variables. A, right? B, C, D, and E. And all that means is that because there's no numbers in this problem, we can only define x as it is related to these variables. So whatever, whatever these variables are that will affect our x value. That means we're solving in terms of these variables. In other words, again, we're defining our answer as if it's the sum or product or something doing with these variables. So how do we get to that step? Well, <clears throat> there, are, you know, there are lots of options and lots of things we can do here. Uh, I, with an equation like this, when I see addition and subtraction, those are the first things that I, I take care of. Now, when you're solving an algebra, if you want to isolate the variable, to get these things out of here, if I see subtraction, I use what? Well, what does subtraction? Addition does. Right? I add D. What undoes addition? Subtraction. So I subtract b. And, and that's what I'm going to start with, addition and subtraction. It doesn't have to be that way, but I think it's very helpful. So I'm going to put a line here. and just telling me that I'm, I'm going to right, take these values now and move forward. So what I do to this side, I have to do to the other side. So if I subtract b and add d here on this side of the equation, right, on this side of the equal sign, I have to do the same thing over here, right, on this side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract b and add d over here. So what's next? Well, we haven't touched this yet, so this is still the same. Bring this down. We have a x over c. Now we have here plus b minus b. Whatever b is, if we're adding it and then subtracting it, like 2, if it was 2, we'd have 2, and then take 2 away. If it was 3, we'd have 3, and then take 3 away. That's 0, right, because we're adding these two opposites. The same thing is true here. We're adding a positive d to a negative d. They're opposites, so they cancel out. They're 0 as well. I'll just put a line through them. So now this has actually helped us, right, because our goal eventually is to have x alone. It's not alone. It's still connected with a and c. But we moved B and D to the other side. So E is still on the other side. right? Minus B plus D. Well, there's nothing to do there. We can't really go any further. So we just write it as E minus B plus D. And now we have this. What do we do? Well, there's, you know, there's options. But I think what makes the most sense now is to multiply both sides by C. And I'll explain the logic to this in a moment. Let me just show you how it works. Multiply by C here, and multiply this side by C as well. Now this is nice because when you multiply this side by C, we're also dividing by C. Multiplying and dividing by the same number does nothing. For example, let's say I had, I don't know, um, a number two. I multiply it by three, and then I divide by three. Well. 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 3, well, it's still 2. So we took 2, multiplied it by 3, and then divided by 3, we're still at 2, right? We haven't done anything. And that's the idea of inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverses. They undo each other. And that's why it's just so helpful in this problem. Because here, the C's will cancel out, right? They undo each other. So now we're getting somewhere. We have A, X... Right, this hasn't changed over here, equals this side of the equation, e minus b plus d, all of that times c. So here, I, I would think, you know, a times something gives you something else. So the inverse is true too. 
if we divide all that stuff by a, it will bring us back to x. And the way we write that is to divide both sides by a to show that we're leaving this equation balanced. a divided by a is 1. And here, there's nothing left to do. So in fact, we've got x all by itself over here. We've isolated it. x equals this right here. And you can go further. You can distribute this c to these parts on the inside. And if you wanted to do that, it would look like this. c times e is ce. c times minus b is minus cb. c times d is just cb. So plus cb. Oh, cd, sorry. Plus cd. Plus cd over a. And that equals x as well. I'll just use the distributor property because I'm multiplying here. So I multiply c by all the parts on the inside. Now, going back to some of the logic, how can we divide it by a? What's the reasoning there? So let me, let me just clear this. So there was a step, right, where we had a times x equals, um, what was it? It was uh, e minus b plus d right, times c. And we divided both sides by a. And I just I wanted to talk about um, why this makes a lot of sense. Um, so why do we divide both sides by a? Well, it goes back to this idea of inverse operations. Instead of a and x, let's say we have, I don't know, 4 times x. Right, so 4 times x equals something. And that's what this is saying here. So pretend all of this stuff equals 12. Now this is the same idea, it just looks a lot friendlier, right? This is the same thing. Because this is saying 4 times something gives you 12. So what is that something? Well, you might recognize it right away. 4 times 3 is 12. And, and then you say, oh, x is equal to 3. But really, another way of looking at it, and one that can really help you with tougher problems like this one right up here, is to say, okay, 4 times something is 12. So then it makes sense that if I take 12 and I divide it by 4, going backwards, I get right that something, that x. And x equals 12 divided by 4, which is 3. And the idea is that when you're multiplying x by something, to figure out what it is, you can go back and divide. Now usually what you see though in algebra, they might show it like this. Um, 4x equals 12. And they say divide both sides by 4. right? 4 divided by 4 is 1 x equals 12 over 4, which is 3, and that's correct. Um, but really, <clears throat> they're just showing you that to remind you that you have to keep an equation balanced, right? When you divide one side by 4, you have to also divide the other. Another way of thinking about it right here is, is this, which is here we're not really dividing both sides by 4, we're rewriting the equation. We're rewriting it into a different equation completely. And it's still balanced, it's still the same thing, because 12 divided by 4 is the inverse, or inverse operation, of 4 times x. And I just wanted to point out that these two things are saying the same thing, it's just that I, I feel as if this is more intuitive. Up here, we can get into that process of balancing, we feel good about it, it's just, um, it, we lose the intuition, right? The reason we're dividing 4 on both sides, aside from keeping the equation balanced, is because it's built on this principle of inverse operations.